Microsoft Loop has arrived in Word Online. What is it? Uh, how does it work and why would I use it? Well, let's check out a working example and then we'll talk about how and why. Uh, I've got an example where I've uh, been working or put together a document and I want to coordinate some of the activities uh, that people are engaged in as they're trying to put the document together. So on the front page, the top page of the document, even before the document starts, I've inserted a loop. Um, I've given it a quick name. You can see Daryl's already in there at the moment and I've just listed off a couple of items that I want people to work on. I've also put a, a link into the loop to the document because we're going to share this a bit later on with other people. And uh, a bit further down, I have also described some of the items and given them a brief about what to do, mentioning their name. And then in this case here too, also using a date just to give a sense of when this needs to be done. Down here too, we've also added, or I've also added this table to perhaps give some ideas and getting get some voting going in terms of what people might would like to add uh, for items and initial thoughts. Uh, so this is a table. Um, I could have inserted a, a voting table. I just decided to create a standard table and use the new capability of changing the column type. So this means that I can choose the kind of column I want uh, to, to leverage, and this one being voting. Um, so that is actually where the loop finishes in the document. But further down, that's where the document starts. And I might just drop in a quick yep, page break there just to, to show it. As the loop gets bigger, it's actually just going to stay on that page. It won't span the page. So how did I get this to work? Where did I find this? Well, first of all, it is in Word Online, and as this is rolling out to targeted release and eventually general, generally available, it's going to get rolled out to people and to documents. So you might find that some people will receive it early, and they might see the feature when someone shares a loop in a Word Online document, but they aren't able to create it just yet till it's rolled out to them. Where would we find it? Well, we've created a new Word Online document, and this at the moment is only supported in Word Online documents saved in your OneDrive. Eventually we expect it to be supported in SharePoint and Teams as well. So that's where that document is. It's in Laura's uh, OneDrive. And you go into the Insert tab and choose from Loop Components. So there it is. And there are only two choices at this stage, but don't worry, it's not the limit. You can start off with these two and add some other things. So let's just quickly add one here. We'll use the uh, task list time this time. And it starts to go through that process of, uh, of setting up that loop file in the background. We'll give it a name. So these are tasks for document. And that's going to save it into Laura's OneDrive where she uh, created the loop. For organizations, just to make sure that uh, you need to have your sharing permissions set so the default link is to share with everyone in your organization. That's what it will check for and enable that kind of sharing of the loop within a Word Online document. So there you go, there's the loop and it doesn't have to finish there. You can uh, continue to add other things. So we know this, forward slash, and uh, oops, I should try that again, forward slash, and then all these other bits and pieces here too. Uh, a couple of new ones here, you can quickly change the, the heading format. Um, we've got our familiar ones there about text and divide and comments and the like as well. Um, and our table that we used earlier. So let's just throw that progress tracker in there just, just to show you how it works. Um, so this progress tracker is another table um, and it comes pre-populated with all the, the bits that you might want to track your progress. Um, assigning an owner, um, you can choose labels as well and define those labels and change them to uh, your needs, suit your needs, and uh, various other types of columns like this date column that we saw earlier that we could change. So that's inserting a loop into a document and then we'd work on the document. Um, let's see a few other places where this actually works quite well. So uh, I've got Project Radio, I've got the uh, link and I can copy and share that with people who are not working on the document. It's independent of the document. This means that I could get input from people who don't yet have access to the document. Um, so uh, let's copy that link and we might go over to Outlook or to Teams and drop that into a conversation. 
we'll come back to this, but we'll just go back to a conversation here and we'll have a conversation with Elizabeth Swan, drop it into a chat and we'll send that off to get Elizabeth's uh, contributions to that loop. So that's pretty cool. Where else can we use it? Well, something else that has arrived, we're able to add loop components to whiteboards. Uh, oh, fancy that. There's also a, a new feature here in whiteboard where we can make people follow us, right? So if there's a lot of people here, they can zero in. That's not loop. We're looking at loop right now. Let's get back to looking at loop. Um, how do we do this? We've copied the link to the loop component. We'll paste and there we go. There's the loop. It is embedded now in the whiteboard. Now you might notice at this stage there isn't a way to create a loop from whiteboard. So the only way you can use loop in whiteboard is to copy it and embed it into whiteboard right there. And it is the same loop as you can see. And we might use other features alongside that to facilitate our meeting and you know just generally bring some of these ideas together. Um, now remember what we do outside of the loop stays out of the loop and what we do in the loop stays in the loop. Uh, so that will be shared with other people too. So that's our, our whiteboard. Where else are we seeing this? Well, of course, if it's a whiteboard, then if we go back over to our meeting, da 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 da, there is the loop as well. So it means that we can bring a loop into the meeting and we're not sort of limited to that um, little thin slit of, a, of an area where we might work with loops in the past uh, in chat. We can bring that into a whiteboard and have a much larger space to work with. So I could just go full, full width, I guess. We'll just blow that up a bit. I've got a lot more room there to be able to, to do that. Don't look like we can actually, oh yeah, let's see, we can drag can drag the size in and out, but we can't necessarily drag the edges to make it longer. Um, so you still see that scroll bar there. Plenty of, uh, plenty of ideas and feedback, right, to be able to give to people. So what is Daryl's experience of this? Let's uh, flick on over to Daryl and see. Well, Daryl was mentioned within the loop uh, as it was created earlier. And if we look into his email notifications, there it is. Um, the great thing about email notifications now is that when you are mentioned within a loop and you open up that email in Outlook on the web, then you will actually see um, where you were mentioned and a live version of the loop. So it's right there. I can see as Daryl, I can see that Laura has it open um, and I can see where she is working. And then this is me down here so I can see where I've been mentioned and I can actually contribute to that loop right here if I wanted to. Pretty cool. Um, Daryl is also able to access the document and work on the document so he can see uh, the various things there about what has been asked of him to do and he can go down and, and work on the document. Um, he's in the meeting of course, for some reason it's not working at the moment in, um, in uh, Teams Online but um, we know that it will work. And uh, of course being able to open up the uh, the loop component, which should be right there. Um, interesting. I think it's because loop hasn't rolled out to Daryl, me, my account, uh, but it is there for Laura, so he can't open it up in whiteboard for some reason. Anyway, we won't troubleshoot that. So why, why would I do this? Why would I use loop inside Word Online? I mean, I've got features there that I could uh, use the comments feature, and comments also, if we just... Uh, Go here and uh, add a comment. Um, let's say, please fix this. I think it was in Word on desktop, but you can actually tick a box in some cases and actually make it into a task. It's a task in the sense that you need something to do, you need to do something to the Word document, but not necessarily a task that would synchronize with, uh, with to do or planner. But anyway, there are features there within Word Online. Why would I use Loop? Well, we said earlier that a loop can be shared with people who are not accessing the document at this stage. You might crowdsource for ideas. You might be asking for people to contribute to pieces of the document without seeing the full document. I also like the idea of being able to bring 
coordination of the document with the few more capabilities and features that will continue to grow uh, within the document, putting it on that first page. It's like we know that eventually we'll get rid of that page, uh, you know, especially after we're ready to publish it. But um, if I want to work on this document, quickly see what are some of the things that have been outlined in terms of a brief, um, maybe you know, contribute to some of those ideas down here and upvote and the like, then I can do that. And then we can actually bring that into a meeting. So back over here into the meeting, uh, then it could be in the whiteboard or it could be pasted into the chat. So if we just paste it over here, then it also becomes part of the conversation that uh, we can contrib contribute to um, during the meeting and after the meeting. If we go back into here, you can see there it is in the chat experience. So yeah, sure, we could use Word Online features to coordinate the document, but we've got a lot more options here and we can take it to different places as well. Um, I'm really getting up to, uh, I guess, the habit of trying to flatten out the way that I work that I want to reach out and see all the different tasks and tools and types of collaboration where I'm currently working. And that's within the document so I can focus and not have to go off to another tool and get distracted. So that is Loop Components in Word Online. We also saw that it was in Whiteboard. Um, what do you think? I know it's early days yet and we're yet to see the, the Loop desktop app, but believe me, I know it is looking pretty good, it's really shaping up, can't say much more than that, but it's all going to make sense when we see these things all come together and connect in with the Loop app as well. So very excited when that becomes generally available. If you like this kind of content, of course you do. If you're right up with interest in, in Loop and trying to work and collaborate uh, in a flat kind of way with a, a collaborative canvas, then continue to follow what I am making and cooking in this loop kitchen. Uh, and uh, yeah, give me a like and subscribe if you found this useful. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.